Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to talk about settlement patterns and survey methods. To start, let's review cluster, dispersed, and linear patterns, concepts we talked about earlier in this course. Remember, when talking about a clustered settlement or a clustered agricultural practice, there's very little space between the items or practices. While on the other hand, dispersed means that there is space between the different settlements, items, or practices. And if it's a linear pattern, it means the arrangement of the objects or practices practices are in a line. Different agricultural practices often use different settlement patterns. For example, if you drive through the Midwest of the United States, you will notice that many of the corn farms are dispersed. Dispersed settlements and farms may see less daily interactions between citizens and farmers, but because the farms are spaced out, it allows farms to utilize their land more. On the other hand, clustered settlements and farms often see higher population densities compared to dispersed settlements. Here, citizens or farmers in the area will often interact more with one another, which could lead to a closer community. You can see when looking at this photo of terrace farming from China that these farms are clustered together. Notice how the houses are all packed together with little space between them. Lastly, we can observe a linear pattern. For example, in Quebec, Canada, which has many of its settlements and farms located along the river. In this photo, we can see that many of the settlements and farms stretch along a main road. In fact, traditionally, linear settlements and farms develop along a road, river, or some form of transportation system, which allows people to quickly get goods and services in and out of the settlement. So now that we've talked about settlement patterns, let's change gears and switch to survey methods. To start, I want to go back to our linear settlement pattern, which here we can also see an example of the long lot survey method. This is when land is divided up into narrow parcels, which each parcel of land having access to either a river or a major road, in order for each parcel of land to have access to transportation. Up next, we have meets and bounds. Meets are often straight lines that connect different parts of a geographic area, where the bounds are key geographic features that define an area. This survey method is often used for short distances and relies on key features of a place. In the United States, we find meets and bounds used more frequently on the east coast of the United States, where Europeans first settled, with the rest of the country using more township and range as a survey method, with the exception of Texas, which was not part of the United States until later and was influenced more by Spanish and Mexican rule, causing Texas to use more meets and bounds as a survey method compared to the rest of the country that use township and range, which we can see when we move west from the east coast of the United States and move into the Midwest and western part of the country, where we start to see township and range as the main survey method. When looking at township and range survey method, we will use a baseline, with townships going north to south on the baseline and range going west to east. This survey method uses longitude and latitude to create a grid system. System. This is a lot more organized compared to meets and bounds and creates clear and distinct pieces of land. This organization makes it easy for people to clearly identify who owns what land, which makes it easier to sell and manage the land, which is important, especially for a country with a large population. And just like that, geographers, another topic review video is done. Now comes the time to practice what we have learned. Answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, check your answers in the description of the video or in the comment section down below. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time online.